What's up guys, in this video we're going to be going over the Imager module in Ozone 7. It is a multi-band stereo tool. It will look like this when you open it up. It's multi-band just like uh, the Dynamics and Exciter uh, modules. And this controls and uh, lets you analyze the uh, stereo-ness um, of your track. So I'll just play a bit here and uh, look at your vectorscope. Look at my vectorscope here. All right, this is the first um, vector scope kind of uh, meter. It is the polar sample, so it's um, takes each uh, takes a dot for each sample. Uh, conversely, the polar level um, measures overall energy. Um, this is the one that I would suggest looking at. This is the one I look at. It looks, you know, it's more kind of uh, useful to me. So, so there's a lot of energy in the uh, mono region, right? And you can fill up this pie and you're still good for mono compatibility. Mono compatibility means when the left and right are collapsed into mono, uh, you will not get any phase cancellation, right? And uh, this one right here, which I won't even begin to pronounce, is more of a traditional uh, oscilloscope display. So we'll just leave it at the polar level. And uh, the one thing you want to focus on is your correlation. You have zero, plus one, and negative one. Uh, zero is, you know, kind of, it's on the verge. If it goes below zero, then you have phase cancellation. You have the left and right canceling each other out. If it's plus one, or anywhere in between plus one and zero, you are in the clear for mono compatibility. Uh, zero and below is, you don't have good mono compatibility. So I'll give you an example here. So right, I'm pegged to plus one. So I have a lot of freedom to enhance the stereo image of uh, my tune here. One thing I want to kind of point out is uh, traditionally in, in the contemporary EDM kind of field, the breakdown is usually very wide. So I'll give you an example here. This is the breakdown. Right, you'll notice that it's it's kind of going into the phase cancellation mode and it's shooting out the side. That's not necessarily bad because it's kind of unimportant, um, in my opinion. And I see this in some tracks, and you know there are ways to kind of uh, repair that because I have a sub um, bass kind of thing in the breakdown that uh, has heavy unison on it. And uh, we can kind of look at this graph here to see uh, the phase cancel phase correlation over time. There's plus one, negative one. Right? Right? So just keep an eye on that. That gives you a readout. But what you really want is uh, no... Uh, phase issues happening when you when the when the dorp happens i'm calling it the dorp because i don't know why all right you can also hit this mono button and that collapses everything to zero and then turn it off so it's, a, it's an easy way to check mono compatibility okay let's get into uh your stereo width so there's four bands here typically on your low end you do not want um, any sort of stereo. You want your low end to be mono. It's very important because you don't want, you know, subwoofers to have any kind of internal phase cancellation at the crossover. That's not, you're not going to have a good time. So what you can do is you can kind of solo that. Right, we're kind of moving around there. We can turn the width of the purple to negative 100%. So now it is mono. This little circle thing is mono, stereo, mono, stereo. Right, so we have energy going on here in our polar level. Equal energy in the center. And what that'll do is that'll kind of, kind of give you a little bit more headroom and, uh, you know, not do any weird things in the low end. It's very important. All right, so let's move up to uh, this guy here. Right? 
as you go up, you can be afforded more stereo enhancement. You can have more stereo as you go up. All right. All right. So what we can do is we can enhance the stereo width to the higher end stuff of the spectrum to kind of compensate. Right, and increasing the stereo width kind of makes it a bit louder. And uh, this is a stereo enhancement tool. So after this, you're going to want to go in with a, a mid-side EQ, which I'm going to go over to uh, clean up and enhance what it's doing. Uh, but you also have this stereoizer thing down here that operates in conjunction with the width. I don't really use this because it doesn't sound too great to me. Uh, you know, you can use it if you want, but to me, it just doesn't sound that great. It's hard to dial in, and I'd much rather go in with a per track basis um, with the uh, separate plug-in version of the imager and uh, add this effect, the stereo effect to it. Um, so yeah, once we once we change the stereo um, kind of uh, representation of the track. Once we change that, then you want to check your correlation down here to make sure that anywhere where um, there's important musical information, you don't want the mono um, the mono compatibility to fall away. So. All right, so we have great correlation. We got plus one. Let's go to our breakdown. Right, we got some going on there, and uh, it it's not necessarily a bad thing because we can do stuff with uh, mid side EQing later on to repair this. It's all about it's a it's a chain for a reason. Like you make you use a plugin to enhance something, and then you use the next one to kind of shape that and to clean it up, and then you know that's why, ironically, not ironically, that's why intuitively. Um, because uh, Isotope pretty, has some pretty smart people working for them. They have a post-EQ after the equalizer. And uh, I think that's what we're going to get into in the next video. Um, so, yeah, uh, hope you learned stuff. Take care, and uh, have a good one.